You know how fast you were going? What? How fast you were going? I don't know. Ten? Eight. Be advised, this is an explicit podcast. If you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot. Leave now. Run in your safe space. Get your little cloth for your tears. All the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and his guest and do not reflect the opinions of any local or government agency. Welcome, everybody. Uh, to the podcast, nice man, of course, and uh, we got a special guest today, not in law enforcement, but we actually did talked about the story when it first came out. Oh, was that early in the year or something like that? Made it on the news again, and I got in a debate with some uh, some people online about it, and she happened to pop in there and asked her if she wanted to come on, and she said, "Yeah." So we'll just uh, go by Piper Fawn. Uh, Stage name, I guess you want to say, right? Hey, yeah, what's up? <clears throat> yeah, I can go by Piper. That works. Uh, she is, uh, if y'all remember back, we had the uh, the lady that <clears throat> her kids got kicked out of the private school, Christian private school or something, because of the display on her back window from her OnlyFans, which, from according to the news, she even agreed with them and started parking farther down the road and, I guess, walking them in. Well, some Karen mm-hmm. decided to make a TikTok about it and <laughs> not only got uh, her children, Piper's children, uh, expelled from school, she got her own children expelled from school. <laughs> <laughs> and some poor little kids that decided to look it up. I don't see how, how they could. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how that works, you know. Uh, on, on a, it's like, oh, you looked at something, so we're going to expel you from school too. Uh, I don't know. So that's who we have here. She recently made a short appearance on uh, what used to be live PD, which is on patrol live now on reels. And I guess that was a story that popped up. I think she got pulled over from window 10 or some shit like that. And of course it was on TV. Just rehashed the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So am I live? Am I good to talk? You are good to talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, the whole stuff in February. I mean, I always know putting it on my car, there was always a chance of, of getting some backlash, and I was prepared for that. Um, and but the funny thing is, is, I had the car decal on there for at least three years. It was two full school years. We were going in the third school year that had been on my car. Um, so the fact that. Um, you know, it like took that long for anyone to say anything it was funny, but then it just took an angry mom. And what was really funny was I had gone to life groups at the principal's house, you know, church events and such with the same vehicle, the same decal, you know, no issues. So it was kind of humorous and laughable um, that it took three years, but finally one angry mom to go to her TikTok. And what she had done was made a, um, I guess some reel that had kind of went viral and basically told any parents they thought that was wrong that they should email or write into the school or call the school and tell them. Well, with her 270,000 followers on her TikTok and her saying this to people about how this is just so terrible for kids, um, it worked. And she got enough complaints that they're like, okay, we have to do something about this. So they're like, all right, well, then you can't bring your car on campus anymore. I'm like, no problem. I never brought it on campus another day after that, except for the day my kids were expelled to get their stuff. Um, I kept it off campus. But then, unfortunately, there was so much media attention with all of it. And I feel like the school was kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place where they had to do something because they were now looked upon, you know, badly. Like, they're, if they didn't do something, they looked like they were supporting me. Even though they weren't, it still appeared that way. So I, I'm not even upset with the school. Like, I get why they did what they had to do. They have, you know, hundreds of kids to look after and be responsible for. Um it's just kind of funny that even when I was long gone, you know, what, a week and a half, two weeks later, this woman still gets her own kids expelled because she kept running her mouth. So that was kind of laughable because it's like, I got money out of this. You know, obviously my followers, they pay to see me. So I get, you know, an increase in followers and 
whatever, which again, to be very clear, that was never my, my plan. I was just simply defending myself. I had no idea it was going to turn into what it turned into. You know, but it did help, that. right? Uh, it had to boost, it had to boost you once it hit the news. Oh, and it did. Absolutely. And that's what's crazy. It's like people assume they're like, oh, she ran to the news with her, you know, her information. But I really did not I, I, I still like I wasn't trying to hide and I'm not the type of person to like, you know, cower down and something comes my way. But I also knew that this decal would be very controversial, you know, had I put it on my car and I was prepared for the backlash I would get. I was just surprised that it took three years at this school before it finally was like all of a sudden this like new issue and so that part was laughable to me and our whole family because even my kids like they they knew about this like we had this conversation you know before we even put the decals on our car you know so they were they they know what we do but at the end of the day what i tell people is like if you're a banker and maybe you as a police officer maybe you can relate to like i don't know if you have children but you don't simply go home and like you know, spew your whole day out to your kids anyways about our no. job. Typically, like, it's it's adult stuff, whatever, no matter what we do for a living. I mean, my mom was a church secretary, but I don't recall her coming home and, like, talking about, you know, how her day was or what she had to do. It was just, it is what it is, and that's it. Um, so that's my thing is, like, my kids know what I do. Do they want to see it? Absolutely not. They have no desire. Yeah, they think it's gross. Okay, but they're not mad at me or they they're not affected or damaged because of it because they also know that's how babies are born and let's be honest every other couple out there that has a child that's how they did it so people are just i think mad that that we film and we choose to make money off of it well that's Um, what i want to get to a lot of that well i read you know you your content is just you or or you and your husband it's not like you out there making it you're you're not y'all not no open lifestyle or swingers or nothing like that yeah only thing y'all did is just put a basically put a camera in your bedroom yeah. so instead of having exactly. it private like, it's not private every other parent of children does yeah and people are calling me a pedophile and just you know i'm like but i nothing i'm doing is criminal I, i'm not breaking a law As a matter of fact i probably pay more taxes than probably 50 percent of americans do because i have so much income and revenue that i do bring in i have to claim that immediately like only fans takes that tax you know, portion away before I even get it hits my account. So there's no denying or hiding from the government. You know, it's it's 1,000 percent legal. Um, and and I get people may have a moral compass and think this is wrong. And I mean, I was raised in a church, and um, you know, I was raised where you didn't do this. You didn't even have sex before marriage, but you definitely didn't. You know, video it and put it out there. So it's not like I'm some like trashy just no moral person i just simply like we enjoy doing this and honestly before we ever posted online like we would share our own videos and pictures anyways so then when OnlyFans started becoming a thing and you know economy is shit i mean at the time when covid hit i was cutting hair so you know how that worked but salons yeah. they got shut down they weren't open well i have three kids to feed so i'm not gonna sit around and put my hand out for ebt so i'm gonna work you know well just like i said um, online that ended up you seeing it i guess to my flag yeah. or something that then people are like yippity yip i'm like hey this lady i'd much rather see this lady got there she's earning her own money legally she's not sucking off the government mm-hmm. tit with the taxpayer mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. i'm gonna tell you what i'll tell you a little thing where the way i grew up i grew up catholic okay in mm-hmm. the church but mm-hmm. i also grew up where where uh my my family uh and i say i'm lucky my family was not like closed off to like the sexual stuff you know you know yeah. i mean mm-hmm. but you know my grandparents were in their 60s still taking shower you go to my grandparents house come in they'd be in the shower together and you're like you know but i mean I love but, that that's so cute but, but they, i feel like kids need to see that i feel like i not see that literally i don't mean literally see that but like you know i'll be standing there in the kitchen cooking and my husband will come up and you know smack me on the ass or kiss my neck and it's like it's not inappropriate to where it's kids can't be seeing it, but it just shows them like my parents didn't necessarily do the ass slapping thing. My dad was always very affectionate and loving to my mom. They still are, you know, 40 something years into marriage. So it's like, to me, except the fact that we're, filming it and that's the part my kids don't see anyways you know i have a a studio that we film in so none of that is even done in the premises with the kids like none of it um the most they might ever see me do is take a selfie you know like in a bikini at the beach you know but like they don't witness any filming they don't see us 
nude, you know, it's, I feel like the perception of, of how we live and how we actually live are, are drastically different. You know, it, it's insane. Like I said, like I told them people online, I was like, you know what? Like I said, I was, so I was raised like that. You're talking about the ass slapping and stuff. My grandpa, I mean, they're both gone now. They'd be in their hundreds if they're still alive. You know, up until the day they died, my grandpa, my grandma would walk past, he'd smack mm-hmm. her on the ass, and he's like, oh, yeah. darling, look at that butt. And one time, at, at one point, you know, later on, like, she had to have one of her breasts removed for cancer. And uh, I remember when we were in, in, at the hospital, you know, we had to, he's like, I need to go outside. He said, that's my favorite one, and I got to kiss it before it's gone. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's just, awesome. so that's the way I was raised up. So, my yeah. family, you know, my, my mom, when she knew I was starting to get to that age and had a girlfriend, she was like, look, she's like, here is a box of condoms. Use these. You don't want to get the girl pregnant. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, because she yeah. knew, I mean, she wasn't stupid. She knew it was yeah, going to happen. Exactly. Say, oh, it's not going to happen. You know, no. no at least mm-hmm. don't. But so when stuff did happen, we know. Mm-hmm. I know I could go talk to my parents or grandparents about stuff, exactly. and I didn't have yeah. to be fearful about it. In like, where it's sex wasn't mm-hmm. taboo. Like when I told them, people, I'm like, I know people and known kids that mm-hmm. were raised up in these little sheltered households, and once these kids mm-hmm. get out in the real world after they're either in college mm-hmm. or grown. They go buck ass crazy wild because yeah. they didn't have yeah. that growing up. So I'm like, mm-hmm. it's just like I told them, I said, they were, some people were dog- saying something about, well, she's got kids. I said, how you know that kid's not going to grow up to be a pastor? How you know that kid's not going to grow up to be a president? You don't know how them mm-hmm. kids are raised. Kids might be raised way mm-hmm. better than, than you're raising your kids. Because, yeah. like I said, I was raised well, up in... funny is I'm actually very strict on social media. Um, so, two of my three kids have cell phones. Uh, one of them does not. But in my opinion, they're still, like, age-wise, her number, I feel like they're still almost too young to have a phone. And a matter of fact, I had to argue my husband to let them, my oldest one, have her phone when she first got it. But it was simply because it was beneficial to us because now they're homeschooled. They are home alone at times, you know, off and on. So I like to have access to get a hold of them if I need them. And it's more or less for safety. And then when they were going to school, it was a call to say, hey, okay, we're at the pickup line or whatever, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but he was very, you know, hesitant of that. But I have blocks on their phone as if they're five years old and they're older than five, you know. But I don't want them on media. I don't let them have, like, my oldest daughter is a teenager and the best I let her have is a Pinterest, you know. I'm very cautious of social media and that's what's funny to me is because one of the parents that we actually, she had um, daughters that were twins that were friends with one of my kids and they were the best of friends. Well, then all of a sudden one day her kids go into school and say, I don't know why, but my, my mom says we can't hang out with you anymore. And I knew exactly probably what it stemmed from, but it was like so bothersome to me because at that point, even though my kids knew what was going on, they never know, like they don't know details, they don't see stuff, you know, it's not like it's in their face. Um, And so I would just kind of laugh at that stuff. Um, So I I do feel bad in those kind of areas that my kids get unfortunately affected. Um, But they also... I think going through all of this with us, they, they know to stand up for themselves and they, they know to, you know, unless something is really wrong, like they know the difference of right and wrong. And they know that what we do is not everyone's, you know, cup of tea. Like they are actually very intelligent kids. Um, but you know, I'd have a, their friend, you know, would like, Oh, I don't want your, my kid hanging out with your kid because you do this. It's like, okay, but my kids honestly have stricter guidelines than your kids do, you know, like their kids, like, 11 years old have their own YouTube channel with subscribers. I'm like, my kid over my dead body will have a YouTube channel. Like it just won't happen, you know? So I'm very strict when it comes to that partially because I know of what's out there and I have seen it. Unfortunately, you know, I have preachers coming to me, um, you know, requesting topless haircuts. Like it's absurd. They kind of, uh, you know, local cops, um, they'll come in their cop cars. And I mean, I've, I've heard them on the phone with their supervisor, like, you know, blowing them off so they can sit there with me for 30 more minutes. And, and again, I don't question it. And I don't judge. But at the end of the day, I don't have to answer for their life choices. You know, and nobody has to answer for mine but me. And I guess that's kind of the thing is, like, everybody has a vice, you know, whether it's drinking, cigarettes, weed, you know, porn, who knows what it may be. And I was just like, everyone's so quick to judge someone else. And it's like, what I laugh about is people say, oh, she's a mom and she's doing this. Like, come on. 
And there's really no moms out there, you know, or moms, should I say, that have never sent a nude picture to a boyfriend or their husband or anyone ever in their life. It's like, but because I do it and because I make it known and I'm not shy behind it and because I get paid for it, then I'm this terrible mom, you know? It's like, don't be mad at me for charging. Be mad at you because you, you did it for free. <laughs> like, well, my thing was, I said... <laughs> This is, we actually talk, we do a midweek news show live. I have co host mm -hmm. like that's what, mm -hmm. like we did last night. And uh, we actually talked about the story when it first came out. And I actually mm -hmm. said my, cons my conspiracy theory was then when it first came out. I said the woman that made the TikTok bitching about it probably caught her husband on there looking at you and got pissed <laughs> off. And, and that's well, why she was complaining. About that is like nobody even i and honestly i'll be honest with you until this all came out and my kids were actually pointing it out to me i really we didn't associate with like parents from the school obviously even prior to even doing only fans i just i'm not the pta mom i'm not gonna go sit on the board and like listen to meetings i don't give a shit like i pay my tuition and you take care of them and that's it like i don't i don't care about your meetings like it never is interested in me so but anyways we're in this, and my mom, my one of my kids is like, "Hey, I recognize so and so's mom and dad. I'm that's who I'm friends with." Well, long story short, come to find out that this mom who complained, her son is like best friends with my son. They like did a sport together at the school, um, and we hung out with the dad. But see what caught me off guard because the mom is white, the dad is black. Again, I'm not judging, but the son is clearly white. But I guess he adopted her children. Again, I, no judgment. I just I didn't know that, so therefore I wouldn't assume. Yeah, I found a picture, and I was like, dad. that kid and you that know, kid really is dad. not his. I, exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't assume that that was the husband to the kid. Like, I didn't know that. So until my, my child pointed out to me, I was like, oh, okay. But I, I laughed because I'm like, I had this decal on there the whole season. They played this sport together. And we definitely spent time together at this particular sport activity together. Not with the mom. The mom was never there, which is also funny to me. You show how bad of a mom I am. But I'm like... Here it is. Our kids did a whole season together for at least, I don't know, 11 weeks, and I never once spotted her there. <laughs> but but I'm a bad mom. Like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, stuff like that is just funny to me. I just, I you can hate what I do for a job, but it, I, it doesn't take away from my parenting, you know? I like huh? that you didn't huh? back down. I can't stand people that back down. Yeah. Well, I feel like I came too far into it at this point. You know, if I was going to back down, I mean, I might want to back down to the first nasty, mean comment I, I was told or said you know, about three or four years ago, you know, when I first started. But it's like now I'm like, I'm so far into it. Do I just give in and scratch my decal off? Or I'm like, no, like, yes, I want my kids to go. And that's, I think, is the funniest thing. People be like, well, you should know better sending your kids to a private school. And like, yes, I agree. I'm not stupid. You know, I have morals. I was honestly, like, honestly, before, right before this happened, about six months before this took place, we actually were members of this church that were affiliated and, and on the school campus. Like, they're all connected. Um, we were, went to church there for probably five years. And, um, we just kind of quit going because we weren't agreeing with some of the things like completely irrelevant to this, you know? Uh, but then, but that's why I laughed. So, like I was there every Sunday with my same vehicles with the label on them, you know, the decal there and not hiding anything. And it's like, no one ever said anything. And then suddenly one angry mom, you know, makes a complaint and then there it goes. And, but it's like, my thing is like, I was totally respectful of parking across the street. I didn't have a problem doing that. I didn't have a problem staying off camp campus. You know, I didn't mind that. Um, we had already decided because by February 1st, we would have had to renew our kids for the next year. And we had already not done this. And this didn't take place until the middle of, middle of February. So we had already decided that we weren't renewing them for the next year. Um, but we just didn't want to have to, like, rip them out before the school year was over like we had to. But I mean, honestly, it worked out for the better. And they're okay. And they're happy. And, um you know, I mean, I think people's perception of our lifestyle and our family life and how it goes on is so drastically different than how it actually is, you know? Well, some of these... I feel like people think that we just are wild and just partying every night, and I'm like, I don't even have any friends, believe it or not. Like, we don't do anything with anybody but my parents or our kids. That's it. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, telling you some of these, and I'm just going to say it, like I say what I want to. I piss lots of people off, mm -hmm. trust me. These... And mm -hmm. even though it's great, these Bible beaters, okay, mm -hmm. get, mm -hmm. I think they have this whole perception of mm -hmm. like you're just you know 
cooking supper buck naked with just an apron on and your kids yeah. running around. It's like, look, this yeah. is just like her job, what she does to make money. Yeah. I'm sure that, you know, yeah. just like a lot of these, well, you'll just say some of these porn stars. I guarantee you some of these full-blown hardcore porn girls, if you see them out in public without all their makeup and hair and stuff done, mm-hmm. you wouldn't know who in the hell they are because mm-hmm. they look totally mm-hmm. different a lot of times. And they don't live like that. Yeah. They just make their yeah, money exactly. doing that. So I'm like, so when exactly. you didn't back down, because when I, I read, they said, you know, well, if you, you know, stop doing it and take all your videos down, I'm thinking, all right, now you want this woman basically to quit her job, how she's yeah. making yeah. money to do this, to keep, to oh, keep going. You're going to pay the tuition because <laughs> private school is not yeah. cheap. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, exactly. So quit your job and we'll let your kids stay here. It's like, okay, now I can afford it. Yeah. Well, and, and at the letter actually said, like, you quit all that and take all your social media down, then we'll we'll discuss letting you come back. Like, it wasn't even a for sure thing. Like, so I could have possibly have done all of that and, like, really lost all my income overnight for them to say, mm, nah, we still don't want you back. I'm like, screw you. Like, <laughs> no offense, but my kids don't need someone who calls herself a Christian but then kicks them out because they don't agree with their parents' lifestyle. Like, I, I mean, I don't know, I'll admit, and I'll throw her in the bus because I don't really care, but my own sister uh, goes to the same church that kicked us out, and you know, thinks I'm terrible and crazy for what I've done. And honestly, I think she's psychopath because I think she's completely lost her morals in her own head. And I, I, I literally think the church is a cult. Like, I have more issues with the church side of it probably than I do with the school, honestly. Because I know at the end of the day, the school has to still, you know, hold it to certain standards. I understand that. I know they have to do what's best for every kid in that school, not just what works for me. And so I'm not even mad at them for that. What I'm most disappointed and probably put out with is the church. Um, you know, even my sister herself calling herself a Christian. Um, it's like you, if, if you're a Christian and you really give a shit about other people, including your own sister, then you would maybe reach out and say, hey, I love you. I think I'm thinking about you. I just, you need to talk. I'm here. Like nothing. The only thing she said to me was, I don't agree with what you're doing and I wish you would stop. <laughs> That's it. I'm like, never like having my back, never like trying to be there. Like maybe a Christian sister would be, you know, nothing like that. So I'm like, yeah, you just keep on proving me right. The Christians are only like, like It'll work. Value. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they're not real. Like, well, I tell you right, people it's like, you don't go to church and stuff no more. I said, nope. I don't. I said, you know, well, first I had a bad taste. I went through, uh, was going through some marital problems umpteen years ago. Uh, and so me me and my wife at that time, we, you know, we used to go to church and everything together. So we went to the pastor and uh, I just say it's Baptist church. And uh, we went to the pastor doing, you know, some trying to do some marriage counseling. Well, I found out behind my back, he was telling her just to divorce me and get rid of me. Basically, because I tried to figure oh it out because God. he was trying. I'm pretty sure he was trying to get in her pants or something. And after that, I was like, you know yeah, what? No. Then because I had an issue uh, back when I was uh, I got kicked out. I got kicked out of uh, of confirmation when I was in Catholic. Uh, when I was a Catholic, mm-hmm. I got they called my parents and told me they didn't want me to come back. You know, I was, I was, you bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, then I, I got in trouble when I was going to a Lutheran church. They, they frown on you beating somebody's ass in the back where the, the <laughs> preacher gets, Hey, the dude pushed this girl and I don't put up, I don't put up with men putting their hands on women, yeah. even back when I was in high school. And, I think, from what I understand, I think that boy still got a scar on his face today. Where, I, but but I I did I just beat shit on. So they like, yeah, we don't want you back over here. I, but anyway, we're in the Baptist, so he did that. So I just had a bad taste in my mouth. I said, I feel like when I go to church, I can walk in fine, and when I'm walking out, I'm pulling knives out my back because there's there, there's you know you're not supposed to judge you're not supposed to do this i said the biggest hypocrites are sitting in there praising jesus and it's stabbing me in the back the whole time I, mean, I said i don't need it i said i don't need nobody telling me what i believe in i know what i believe in who i believe in and all the stuff like that i don't you know need somebody to tell me that and this is like when we were going to this church again still doing the same thing i'm doing now still have the same decal on my car but because we're going to church and contributing i guess I mean, that's why it mattered you know i had um just gotten like a breast enhancement this is probably like three and a half years ago and the preacher's wife himself is driving out to our house giving us food so to go to show you how much they don't care about that that goes to show you you know they were like bending over backwards bringing us dinners like helping 
laughing at us, you know? So that is why it's so laughable three years later, all of a sudden it's a big deal. Because back then I had the same decal on my car. It was nothing new. I was definitely doing OnlyFans, which is hence why I had the surgery. <laughs> like, so it's all laughable. And then now it comes out and now it's like, oh my God, you're so terrible. And then now it's like those people that were there for me then, I guess, because I'm not going to the church and donating every Sunday. And then now they have nothing to say to me now, you know? And it's like, they don't want the publicity. And it's like... It's crazy, and I'm not going to knock, you know, God, because I still believe in God, and I am still a Christian, and I won't take away from that. I will say that some of the people I've been treated the shittiest by in my entire life have been people that call themselves Christians, and including a sis my sister. Like, I only have one sister, and I honestly wouldn't spit on her if she's on fire right now, and I feel like she probably feels the same about me, but she calls herself a Christian. At least, at least I feel like what I'm doing, I'm pretty open to what I'm doing and I'm honest about it. You know, I don't, I don't try to pretend like, you know, I'm, you know, Susie homemaker Monday through Friday and that crazy on Saturday and Sunday. Like I recognize what I am and I don't deny that. And I know it rubs a lot of people the wrong way and that's okay. Uh, my only, you know, thing that I still live by my own personal self is I keep a moral compass and I'm not out sleeping around multiple people. I only am with my husband or myself. So if God forbid my kids were to see this even 20 years from now when I'm well out of it, you know, at least they can still say, well, mommy never cheated on daddy. You know, it wasn't like that. Um, and I know in some people's eyes that still is disgusting and terrible and like, okay, that's okay. Like, you, you have the right to feel that way. You know, I, I personally think it's disgusting and terrible and boring as hell to go work on Monday through Friday, nine to five bank job. Like I could never do that. You know, but to each his own. You know, it works for them, and this works for me. And I love the freedom and availability I have with my kids, and I feel like I have never been closer to them in my entire life than I am right now with them. And it is the best feeling that my husband and I both have with them. And and you know, for that, I if if I knew that was the outcome I would have with all this hate that I've gotten, I would do it a million times over because I feel like our bond has been amazing over it, you know? And that, to me, is worth what anyone on the internet can say, you know? Yeah. So, well, like I said, it's just you and your husband. The only thing y'all doing different than yeah. anything else is just putting on video. And if he's fine with it and you're yeah. fine with it, screw what yeah. everybody else has to say about it. You know what? Yeah. If you don't want to see it, don't pay to look at it. Because I want to tell you people yeah. that are listening right now, you can go look up Piper Fawn on the internet and all them porn sites. Mm -hmm. The one you pull up is not her. Yeah. The redhead. Yeah, if you pull up just Piper Fawn and you do images, I think I will come up. But I think if you do Piper Fawn and you do videos, some redhead. It's like, a redhead from Yugoslavia. <laughs> yeah. Realistically, I don't think you can find anything, any videos of me for free at all out there. Like, I haven't done any free sites. So, unless you find, I would be surprised if you find it free. You might find pictures, but to find a full free video, I would be very surprised that would even be up So, there. you done, um, done great on I keeping really that. I really did my diligence trying to keep that not like that. I didn't so. even, well, I just did a search period on just Piper Fawn <laughs> and uh, just some regular pictures that, like, you have on Facebook popped up, period. And only other, like, uh, more hardcore stuff was the redhead Yugoslavia girl. And uh, I said, yeah, well, yeah. that's not her at all. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I don't know when these kids at this school supposedly looked you up. I don't know what they saw. So I know the full story behind that, to be completely honest. So last year, for probably about... Maybe a total of like seven or eight months. Um, we had an additional vehicle. Like we still had the, well, we don't have the charger anymore, but when we had the charger, you know, it was on the back window. I'm sure you saw from the news stuff. And it was on my Durango, which is, again, those are the OG vehicles. They've been on there from like three years ago from day one. Well, about probably, this is last year, but probably, like, I don't know, maybe March or April of last year. Um, we had bought like a, a third little like fine like mudding truck, super duty, just an older, you know, whatever. It was like a 2001 or something. I don't know. Um, we bought it, just kind of paid cash for it, some little vehicle. And we decided to spend a few hundred bucks and get the whole tailgate um, lit up. Or not You're not going to be on live PD again yeah. right now, are you? you I, I hear yeah. sirens. <laughs> we're, we're not gonna, are we going to be on live PD? <laughs> <laughs> um no but i uh so we had the full tailgate like that was the most wrapped at that point we'd ever done anything we wrapped the tailgate uh, of that vehicle and honestly we still didn't even bring that vehicle a lot to school it wasn't like we purposely did it to show it off at school like that was never an intention like obviously i'm not looking for you know 12 year olds to subscribe to me that's never my plan that's disgusting you know but um 
but people when they advertise their business they it's wherever they drive it's not intentionally one area or the other it's just that's where it's at you know um so well we had decided to get this whole tailgate done so probably like a few months into the year um or like i'm sorry it was probably like the day before this email came about my car from the school saying i can't have my vehicle in the car they are on the premises they asked me about this uh, this truck and I was like oh that truck motor blue we haven't had that truck in four months at this point it had been a long time since we even had this vehicle um, so like okay no problem so that's kind of how we left it well then it wasn't until like later than like oh wait you have it in your window too oh you can't have that like <laughs> it's like okay you so way nicer kind of, than like, me the backstory behind the, the vehicle and kind of what happened with that it's like people think that I like got rid of my car and put it on a truck. I'm like, no, that was just an extra car. But we only had that truck for like six months. Like it was so brief. <laughs> but I guess it shows how much he'll pay attention to me. But <laughs> you're nicer than yeah, me because no, no, uh, Friday night. The, I was not expecting that. Of course, that was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, what are the chances like <laughs> to get on camera? And the funny thing is, when I I was actually came to a red light, we were, we were going to we were at dinner. Yeah, and then kind of last minute, my kids were like, oh, Inside Out 2 is, is out now. I'm like, oh, I want to see that. I'm like, let's see if it's playing late anywhere. Let's try to go catch it tonight. So we were probably like 30 minutes from the theater where we kind of are live, where we live at. And um, so like, all right, we'll drive over to this theater because it looks, you know, they haven't been to that theater yet. We thought it might be interesting. So we uh, had that way and like we're on 92 on International uh, Boulevard or Speedway. And uh, I see a cop unmarked, but I could tell the tag, you know, he was a cop. And I wasn't doing anything wrong, so I stopped at the red light, kind of even with him. The red light turns it turns green, the car in front of me turns, so then I go straight, and as soon as I get over the intersection, he immediately gets behind me and flips his lights on. Well, I knew I hadn't done anything wrong, so I knew whatever he was catching me for was either maybe out of curiosity for the sticker, or to be honest with you, even though I know my window tent is too dark, I know that, but I have never I mean, I'm 35, and I've never gotten pulled over for window tent. So while I can't argue that, I just coincidentally have never gotten that issue before. So it was new to me. And what's crazy, this was Friday night. On Thursday night, the night before, uh, we had gone to a little reggae concert in downtown Orlando. When we go to concerts like that, I don't take my whole purse, my wallet. I just give my ID and me, my debit card or whatever to my husband. He puts in his wallet, and that's kind of, that's it. Well, that's exactly what we had happened with the next night, that Friday night, because he wasn't driving, he didn't have his wallet which is understandable. I was in, you know, at home, but my ID was still in it, unfortunately. So when they pulled me over, I was embarrassed too, because I'm like, I literally have never had that happen. Like I've never gotten pulled over for, you know, and not having my license. I was embarrassed and like felt bad about that. And I was like, I have my passport or my, I have my medical or ID card, which would you like to have? And he was like, Oh, your med card's fine. Well, then I didn't know again, at now the end of all of this, the hindsight, I know that now I was filmed and like, they talked about me being, having my med card. And then of course people are now are like, Oh, you don't even have a, you don't even drive with a license. Like, okay, do you guys understand? He was a cop. Like if I wasn't legal and allowed to be there, he obviously would have not let me drive so it's like for you guys to assume that i was like illegally driving is crazy like and um but it was funny because he did he's like i think if you get um you know an optometrist is like to write a letter or something if you wear contacts i said i do because i can't see far away i do have bad vision and he's like well if you you know get a a a, a tom just to probably write you a letter you can probably keep it in your car and you probably get away with a little darker tint i said i was like oh, okay well good to know i didn't know that that was kind of all it was said well then now it's turned into oh she got pulled over she didn't have her license she had to show her med card she got away with it luckily the cop was being nice to her you can only give her a warning um and she uh, told them that she had an appointment with an optometrist. Like, I never said that. Like, I didn't say I had, a, had an appointment. Like, I'm not lying and saying I said that. I'm like, who said that? Like, so it's so funny. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a camera. So for them to say that I said all that, it's like, what? I thought they didn't come like, up with uh, the camera. They just stayed in the back. Yeah, yeah, so as okay, so as I have a backup camera, of course, in my car. So when I put it in reverse, like I had pulled into a parking lot and like into a parking spot when they pulled me over. And there was the one cop that pulled me over was behind me. And then there was probably like at least three or four other cop cars to the right of my car. Um, but it was a dark parking lot. It was like an, like an empty parking lot. Someone's beeping at OnlyFans <laughs> truck right now. <laughs> uh, 
So it was a kind of a dark part of us. I couldn't tell. I knew there was like a couple of vehicles behind us, but I honestly thought they were just being on alert because it was Daytona and because there was some truck event going on. So I thought they were just being careful for themselves. Like I didn't think much of that. Um, but then as we were, I was getting ready to leave, he gave me my warning and we spoke and we were done. I rolled my window up and in reverse. And then I get up in reverse. I see in my camera that there's like a camera. I'm like, what? So I rolled my window back down and I looked out and that's when I saw a camera guy. I was like, oh. And I kind of made the joke. I'm like, guys, like how crazy if this is like on cops? Like how weird would that be, you know? And that's all we said about it. Well, the theater was like five minutes away from where we were pulled over. So we were already late at that point. We actually missed, we were trying to see Inside Out too. We missed the movie. So we caught that movie If um, with Ryan Reynolds. But so we had the movie, caught back out. Again, I still didn't check my phone because I was driving home. So I drove 30 minutes home and get home. And I pulled my phone. And all of a sudden, it's like ding, 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 like blowing up. Like, oh my God, I just stayed on OPL. Like, what's OPL? I didn't even know. Like, I had no idea what I was even, like, looking at or anything. I, I was like, oh, wow, like, I didn't know this. Uh, but, yeah, I think like, it's crazy. One girl was like, oh, she knew her tent was too dark. It was just a publicity stunt. I'm like, who in this world ever? I mean, you as a cop, I'm sure, can understand. Whoever wants to get pulled over. You know what I mean? Like, nobody's asking for it. Like, I knew I was getting wrong or illegal, but I still get nervous. You know, you're pulled over. You don't want to be in trouble. Like, I don't, you know? So, well, have you like, seen? That stuff is funny to me. That's the humorous part of it. <laughs> Did you see the story that recently came out? You might not have seen it where uh, they got this cop just lost his job for uh helping him some no, chick shoot yeah some girl has an only fans or something and they never showed his face or nothing but he like it was staged and pulled over well somehow they figured out it was him and he ended up getting she like showed her tits and stuff and he like touched but it never showed us it only showed oh. him for like this and he he ended up getting fired and all kind of stuff i'm like god that's so stupid uh -huh. See my That's shirt. It bad. says only. Yeah, see my shirt. It says only felons. Twenty twenty four on it. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. I like it. <laughs> my, I like it. My, my, my wife's always. I got all kind of shirts. <laughs> What's funny, I don't know if you actually caught the show. I didn't catch it, and I haven't seen a rerun yet. I can't find it. I don't know if it's not available or if I just missed it. It's not going to show again or what. Oh, I don't. I'll be but, honest with you. I don't watch. <laughs> I don't watch cop shows. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I just, yeah, I mean, I honestly, my, my parents probably watched, like, I was actually expecting my dad to call me, like, uh, yo, so I saw you on TV, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but it's funny to me, though, the fact that anyone would think that, like, and what's funny is, I don't know if it's accurate, but I heard they were talking right before they pulled me over, because I guess, obviously, we're sitting at a red light, so they can see my car for a few minutes before we take off, um, but someone had said the commentators something about there's no way it's a cop, you know, because I had the blue line sticker on my tag. But I just do that. Um, I do have a nephew that's a, a local cop, but I honestly do it out of just respect for law enforcement. Like, I, I just like I feel like so many people like have such this bad rap against um, you know cops, and I feel like majority of them are pretty good, you know. Um, and I have a lot of them are clients, you know, too. So of course I'm gonna you know appreciate and show respect for you know his helping me out ultimately and supporting me. Um, but that's honestly why I did it. But then people were saying like, oh, there's no way that that's a, a cop, but only fans. We gotta pull over and find out. I'm like, damn, I feel like maybe that like hurt me a little bit. Like maybe that got me pulled over. Like maybe uh, I should take it off now. No, I'm, I'm willing. I'm willing to bet what got you pulled over was a curious cop wanting to know what you look like inside that car yeah. with that OnlyFans sticker <laughs> on it. That's what I'm telling you. And they said, well, she's yeah. got illegal tent or whoever's in there has got illegal tent. We're going to light them up just to see. And plus, they're live, so they need to have content. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've I've pulled That's over. I like, I've really made good footage for them. And, and while I don't. I wish we had a fucking truck. While I don't necessarily knock the fact that I got the publicity sure it was nice but what everyone I think misconstrues is I mean I'm sure you probably understand too like most people they're level had to understand it but like with all that good publicity comes with so much hate too you know it comes with like tons of like knocking me down and like giving me shit and it's like oh okay and it's like in February right before um I did the interview I knew it was going to air and I I didn't know it was going to take the extreme that it did but I knew it was going to be probably crazy so in that meantime I kind of prepared myself I chose to stay away from like links and outlets and like viewing anything and like but this time I really wasn't like expecting it prepared then all of a sudden people were like hey do you see you like here's the link see this see that and, like <laughs> That's the worst thing for me. I need to stay out of the comments section because people are mean, and I have to learn how to 
just kind of like tune them out. Because what the funniest thing to me is like they'll get on there and they'll talk and they'll have like this paragraph about what I do or what supposedly I did or happened with me. And it's like, okay, who told you that? <laughs> like, I love when I look at my own life through someone else's eyes and what they think that I know. One person's like, why? Why did you go to a movie forty-five minutes away um, from your house? It's like, who said I live forty-five minutes away? Like, who are you? Like, just because my kids got expelled from a school in February uh, and varies doesn't mean that's where we still are. You know, in July or almost July. You know, I like, but that stuff is funny to me when people feel like they know so much based on what Google told them. And I've had to learn. Um, that's where my hardest thing is to learn that like. They don't know what they're talking about. And I don't have to sit here and, like, justify and explain my actions to them and correct them because I am not doing anything wrong, you know? And I, I, I like, who are they to me? Let them think of it. Because at the end of the day, if they're going to feel and have an opinion about me, regardless of what I say. And I say that about taking them to a late night, taking my kids to a late night movie. If I was going in there without my kids and just my husband and I going to a late night movie, well, then I would be a terrible mom because I left my kids at home late at night and I should have been at home with them. You know what I mean? It's like, you can't win with the media. Like, I was doing a good thing. I took my kids to dinner and we went to a movie and we had a family night. Nothing oh, you wrong. can't. I wasn't speeding or Writing. Can't win for losing. You can't win for losing when it comes exactly. to, to to the media or anything uh-huh. like that. It's like so. It's yep. like that. I, you know what I say? Because everybody's like, you just need to stay out the comments. I can't help myself. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm too nosy, <laughs> and I want to see, especially when I piss people off, because uh, we say in here. See, you see, I have a whole jar of them because I never give them out. You see this? I have a whole jar of fucks right here, and I don't give them out. That's why it's still full, because I don't give a fuck. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, fuck your feelings. I say, you come at me stupid. I got to watch myself on Facebook and stuff so I don't get kicked off. Mm-hmm. I said, but I'm the type of person. I will, I, you come at me stupid. I usually come back, like, you come at me stupid, I'm going to come back at you a retarded. It's like, because I don't care. And, and I've been a cop for 30 years. You ain't going to say yeah, nothing exactly. to me that I haven't heard that's already. I probably say I got myself in this trouble. So it's like, mm-hmm. it don't don't come at me stupid when I come back at you harder and I hurt your feelings and you in the boot. I don't want to hear about it because I'm gonna make. And I tell people I'm gonna make. I'm, I, I will make you cry. Okay, the de- so I will say stuff to you that the devil the devil will say. What the hell did he just say? So it's just because I will do it. My friends will tell you that too. They're like, look, don't come at him like that because you're not gonna like it when when he does have enough of you because i'm a very patient person i'll let somebody just dig and dig and dig until i've had enough and then i just like just lose my shit so you're much nicer than me i totally get it that karen i'm the same way and i feel like a lot of this people you know um or like that's what I'm getting a lot of like the women that the very few very few minority of women that actually support you know what I'm doing they either do it themselves or they're just like good for you you know where like and I feel like the ones that have a problem with it are probably because the women who have gone through maybe like an issue with their maybe with cheating or with their husband looking at porn or whatever it may be you know so I feel like I'm the their way out like I'm the face they can put anger towards you know like oh, okay I'm mad at you it's like but a piper find never existed you know porn is still out there like yeah. people are still not what they want to do like I don't make the don't make or break the industry like it's still gonna happen with or without me you know I'm not anyone compared to the millions that are out there you know it's like it's still gonna go on and, and I'm the same way I'm not gonna like I, I don't go looking for confrontation but I mean, I've gone through, like, what, eight or nine Facebooks now because I just don't tolerate bullshit. Like, I'm not going to let someone talk down to me, and I don't care if I lose my platform or not. Eventually, I get to a point where I'm like, okay, screw you. I'm not going to let you just say what you want to say about me, you know? But then a lot of times, I let them just talk because I know they don't know what the hell they're talking about, and it's not based on facts. It's based on what they read on Google or, you know, whatever. It's like... I just have to just let them think how they want to think because I know at that point they've already decided on me how they want to feel, you know. So whatever I say isn't going to change how they look at me or, or whatever, you know. Oh, exactly. I tell everybody like on my when I'm just in the podcast, I'm like go follow me on Rumble because a lot of, I have. I have some people that just love my live show, and I'm like, go follow me on Rumble, because it's just one of these days that I'm, I'm not big enough, or I must not be on their radar. They're going to kick me off. I already got kicked off of Twitch, and, and I'm just waiting. I said, YouTube and Facebook, all of them going to kick me off when they realize what I say and how I say it. 
because mm-hmm. I just don't watch. I mean, I'm like, so I'm like, follow me on Rumble because it's a free speech platform. <laughs> I can say what I want to say, you know. Like, well, that's why I just recently I'm trying to push Fansly. Um, Fansly is a newer platform that I've been on. I don't have a lot on it yet, but it's very similar to, um, like, it's, I feel like it's like, it's a good, happy mix of OnlyFans and Facebook because you can post, I can post a million things a day and I can be anything from like completely birthday suit style stuff to, you know, in a fully outfit going to dinner. Yeah. Um, but it basically everyone can follow me. It can, I can have 2000 people following me, maybe only 500 people when they want to look at me, you know, nude or see the, the more intimate stuff. Um, and then they can basically like it's set to where everyone can see based on what they pay for, what their subscription level is. So I'm like, in a way, it's good because even if it's a nude picture and someone's not paying, they're just a free follower. They can still at least see my face. It would just it would blurt out yeah. anything that's not appropriate, you know. So I'm like that to me. Like I'm like, I wish more people would kind of be pushing that and kind of get that going because that's like the next best thing, in my opinion, to a Facebook. It's almost like, in my opinion, I feel like it's like a Facebook. OnlyFans and Instagram kind of all combined, you know? Because I feel like... It says Fansly, how you spell it? Fansly, F-A-N-S-L-Y. S-L-Y, okay. I'll have to look, look that. I've it's never like heard of that. It's a little part in the law. That's kind of how it looks, yeah. Cause, uh, yeah, but I, uh, I just, I, that's something I just, that's my newest uh, platform. We got the truck, you know, wrapped in my OnlyFans. I added the Fansly to it. Um. So I just I wish it could like really take off more than what it has. I feel like it's been around a couple of years and still not that, people, not that many people know about it yet. But I'm like I feel like if we could make it something, it, it ultimately that one app could eliminate having to have Facebook, Instagram, and I mean not only fans, not replace only fans, but I could feel like it could combine with less restrictions. You know, of an only fans or an. Um, Facebook and like an Instagram, you know, I feel like they're so restricted and if someone gets mad at you, they can block your photo and, you know, they get pissed off and ban you or whatever. And I feel like there's not that option with fans. Like I feel like it's a little bit more lenient in that area, if you will. Well, I have my Patreon where I put out, you know, other content. No, my content, you know, for subscribers, the stuff that I'll talk about a little more blatantly than I do. Like I said, I just recorded us doing this. The Patreons will get us talking like this. Everybody else just gets audio and stuff like that. But, uh, they just... I forgot what I was going to say. I'm freaking old, you see. <laughs> Believe it or not, I got I got kids that are almost your age. You <laughs> what? I got, I got a son that's 31, 32, so I'm old. <laughs> But like I said, I have all respect for you. I see, I think your husband's next to you. Good for him. Like I said, I'm just yeah. glad y'all, hey, make your money. Do what you got to do. Uh, Thank you. Just, hey, it's, thank, we live in America. It's a free country, right? Suppo- yeah, well, yeah. It used to be completely free. It's partially free now. It's not quite, unless we get Trump back in office. Uh, right. They are. Uh, yeah, not all the way anymore. No, it's not. No. Uh, yeah. And I got to watch myself. Like I said, I retire in about, I got about 18 months left and I retire because I'll just be honest with you. I had, uh, I got been getting really mad about some of the politics going on, like all this free Palestine stuff. And I don't know how you feel about them. I'll say it anyway. And I saw them one, they were like burning an American flag. I went and bought a, a Palestine flag because I was just going to burn it on video. And I'm like, I better wait until I'm retired. Cause if this that shit goes viral or something, I'm going to get all kind of shit at work. <laughs> you know, I said, I don't want to get fired right before I retire. I mean, like I said, I'll have my 30 years and 18 months and I can do whatever the hell I want to do. I already decided the sign I'm going to put in my front yard uh, to slow people down. Big pink sign. It's going to say free blow jobs. Mm-hmm. And then underneath it, it's going to say, now that I got okay. your attention, slow the fuck down. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, well, that's the biggest thing. I think people are so like, oh my God, I can't believe she put this on her car. I can't believe like she did this. And now I don't know if you've seen my pictures of the truck we had fully wrapped. Like it's all in only being. So. I saw the speaker uh, box thing on Facebook yeah, I mean, we y'all get, were like, having done. Obviously, doing. as you heard, like, on my car. <laughs> yeah, so that's a little. So our local uh, 
well, it was local to us, but our little uh, audio shop that does all, like, my sound for my car, does the sound for the truck and everything, they uh, were trying to build these little, like, boom boxes, and they wanted to kind of give it a go. So um, we ordered one through them, and they did, and they, like, customized it with Piper Fawn and all that. So that's pretty cool. So it's fun to take on the beach and, and whatever. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so next weekend, though, I have the Exotica uh, Porn Convention in Miami, so that should be interesting. So you'll have to, I'll have to uh, share some uh, some footage of that with you because uh, there's extreme stuff there. It's everything from midgets doing glow, you know, glow paint dancing to <laughs> fire blowing, to hula hoops, to you name it. <laughs> Speaking of midgets, we talked about a midgets last night on the show. They had this little short crossing guard that got arrested. She was like that big in. My, my my co-host, they, they were just like, I said, yeah, I said, hell, I said, I would. I said, you know how much money you can make off a midget on a new platform? You get you a midget with them little bitty hands, and you get them to hold people's dicks and take pictures. I said, you know how big my dick would look in that little bitty hand right there? I said, look huge. I said, you can make a whole platform on it for people can put that on their dating sites and look how big your cock looks in that little bitty hand. There you go. I would do one it's like instant dick enlargement <laughs> right there, pictures. See? Yep. <laughs> yeah, you don't even do a surgery. Just get small hands around. Yeah, it. <laughs> just, just get some midgets with some Vienna sausage fingers. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I can be very in. My, my wife tells me just to shut up most of the time. No, it's funny. I like it. <laughs> You got to, I'm constantly thinking, but like I said, I appreciate you. I appreciate your husband. Like I said, I think y'all are great because like I said, doing what you want to do. My main thing is don't back, you didn't back down. How many people you see with this cancel culture bullshit that every time, yeah. oh, well, he said the N word or he said, or, or they said this and yeah. hurt, hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. The next thing you know, they apologizing. What did that get them? Yeah. Nothing. You got to apologize and you yeah. still lost whatever. Don't apologize. If you said it, hey. That's me. I'm going to say, well, you said, no, I said it. It's exactly what I said. I'm not going to back down from it. It's probably why I don't have a lot of friends, but I don't care. I'm the same way, though. I feel like uh, we have chosen to distance ourselves from people just because of that. Um, because I feel like we we meet a couple. Like, nowadays, so many people are into swinging, which, again, I don't knock it. But so many people are into that. And because they're into that so much, they assume that, like, because we have this open lifestyle that oh that must be what they're into and it's like but we're really not I, I still will like stab a bitch if they ever touch him like <laughs> I will not put up with it like I won't even that will, will not even happen you'll see me in the news for like stabbing someone and that, then you'll know that's what happened <laughs> but um but yeah I mean it's hard to because I feel like we find normal friends that maybe are in it are in the industry or any type you know they're like oh but you know, you do porn, you must want to try to fuck my husband. Or, you know, it's like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm fully invested in my own man. I don't want yours, but well, it's like, it's my career, you know? A lot of swinging people, uh, I've noticed because, you know, I met some and I went to a swing club one time because I'm curious, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I would rather go to one of those places in a regular nightclub because people are more respectful nicer and everything else. if somebody comes up to you and like comes on you're like look no we're not here for that or whatever you know they're like oh, okay thank you very much and they'll leave you the hell alone if you had a regular club yeah, yeah. i might have to fight joe yeah. blow dickhead over here because yeah. he don't know what the word no means so those yeah, are the most too. non-judgmental and usually most polite people you'll meet you know once they understand no look, we're just here to watch or something like that so I will fine. say those are some of the most open-minded people I've ever been around, and the least judgmental is when I go into like I we've been to a few swingers clubs before, and that's not our thing to go and swap, but we'll go and have a good time and just experience it. Um, and it's a fun experience, but that's all it is for me is an experience. Like I don't want to like take that home with me. Um, but yeah, we have a good time, and and but I will say that they are very non-judgmental, and most of the time people are respectful, and I do agree with you. They are more open-minded there than anywhere else. But they're like I have, we have been to one um, in like the Volusia County area that has not been so pleasant. That the kind of be like, 
it's almost like some of them you go to and they they respect that you just want to kind of hang out and, and experience the, the life, the atmosphere, if you will. But then I feel like some of them that they assume that that's what you're there for and that's it, and they're just ready to jump your pants as soon as you get in there. I'm like, no, hold on, like I just got here five minutes ago. Like, yeah, I don't even know your name. I'm like, hold on. No. Or you could go to one and be right. sitting there mind your business and get groped by a 65 year old lady that that you just thought maybe look remind you your grandma and just there totally you graced you out. You know, you're like. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying that happened or anything like that, but I'm just just saying. <laughs> like not speaking from experience, I'm just saying you know if it did happen. <laughs> yeah, just say that could happen to you. Like I said, I think I read. I hope you have fun in Miami. Oh, you got my email. Hey, send me some shit. Uh, I'd pre- I mean, like if you out there, I mean, yeah, definitely. That's, I'll send that's cool. Uh, for next weekend, it's gonna be fun. Uh, like I said. I have, like I said, I have more respect for somebody like you and your family for just sticking up and just, you know, not letting everybody, not letting, not, 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 let's say, the moral majority dictate how you're going to live your life or nothing like that. Because too many people do. And uh, it's just, like I said, that's why I, I was taking, oh, yeah, that's sure. why I was taking up for you online. Right, you know, for I sure. Yeah, I mean, like, look at me. I'm going to promise tomorrow. I'm like, it's just, no. It's yeah. like, you people. Yeah, you, we're not promised tomorrow. Like, we can help you here tomorrow. So it's just no. People need to like said. I mean, I got my opinion on stuff, and people don't like it. But it's like I'm not. I don't try to like just dog people out. So you're a great person. Yeah. Uh, like I said, look out for you. Yeah, you 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 know how to get in touch with me anytime you want to come on for anything or whatever. Uh, you you're more than welcome to. Uh, Absolutely. Y'all be safe. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking up for me. I, <laughs> I'll find your fansly thing and put it in the description. Uh, I'll I'll shoot you a, a email or something. I'll put this out. This is gonna come out Sunday. I'll put it out the the audio of it. Okay. You have an iPhone or are you, awesome. Are you a blue? You a blue phone or a green phone I have person? A, I have an Android. You're an Android. <laughs> a green phone person. I am. Uh, you're a green phone person. Oh Lord, I always damn green phone people. <laughs> Like, what's wrong with the people? Damn it. Damn, green phone. My, one of my co-hosts, Freebird, all of us have have iPhones except him, and he's got that thing. We call me damn green phone person. It's the only one. You screw up our, our you, you screw up our, our, our group chats and everything. I mean, I said just, and he just started a new business, uh, booting 18 wheelers. And it's like, it's like, dude, I know, I know how much money you making. Like, like a shit ton. Like, yeah. No, no. I mean, he's like he'll have like the other night he had like a five thousand dollar night. Damn. One That's night. Crazy. We got one night. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you you can go buy a new phone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find it, but <laughs> I will tell you they they when I when I told them uh, that I was going to be interviewing you because they were here. For, they're like, well, when tonight? I'm like, no, I'm doing it. I think like, this is Motor Cop Chronicles. This ain't the midweek news. I said, y'all shut up, calm yourselves <laughs> down. Y'all have to listen to it like everybody else. <laughs> but like I said, I- anytime, if you have something new come up or whatever, hey, I'm easy going awesome. and stuff like that. Uh, y'all stay safe. And, uh, awesome. I appreciate y'all, you it. Keep, just keep doing what you're doing. Just be being real. Uh- yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate you taking up for me and not being uh, so judgmental like typical people are. And most people well, are like, oh, she's trash. Like, she must sell her vagina. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I have pictures of it, but that's all. <laughs> hey, I mean, what my mom said when I said, Mom, I'm naked when she was still alive. And she's like, if I see anything I ain't never seen before, I'll hit it with a stick. You know? <laughs> they they might not all... They might not all look alike, but they're pretty much on the same spectrum they're there, all right? right? I tell everybody, I tell everybody, I said, if you if you think about it, every hand you've ever shaken has had a dick in it one time. A dick in it. <laughs> so I mean, I said, just think That's of it that way. I mean, think of it's true. I mean, <laughs> so. Uh, that's hilarious. It's true. It's so funny. <laughs> Think about that. So, like I said, y'all have a good time. I appreciate you. And like I said, I'll, I'll send you the thing of the podcast stuff. If you ever need something, hit me up, please. Awesome. If you get to I'll Louisiana, if you get to Louisiana around the Baton Rouge area, let me know. Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a good All night. Right. You too. Bye-bye. All right.
Uh, well, everybody, that was – I think it was pretty awesome. Uh, I think it was a good conversation. I, appre- I really appreciate our uh, – I could hear her husband laughing in the background too. Uh, I hope you all liked it. If you want to watch the video of it, like I said, you will have to uh, go and uh, sign up on Patreon. Uh, if anybody wants a great cigar, you can go to – MyPatriotCigar.com and order you a cigar using Motor Cop Chronicles. You can go get your uh, merchandise there also. Uh, got new t-shirts. I'm always making new t-shirts. I don't buy that many t-shirts, but uh, I'm going to keep making them because I like to wear them anyway. You know, it's fun making your own shirts. Uh, speaking of the Patreon, we're going to shout them out because uh, I do help me pay the bills. We have Mr. Alex Jones, uh, Kelly Meyer, Jared Nitrous, Mr. William G. Bo Jr., Dan Carlson with Burley Boards. We know about them Burley Boards. We got T Bird, Mr. Hoppy Hoppison, Blake Walker, AA Round High Head Set Podcast, C Palmer, Roy Spalding, our favorite Australian girl, JoJo, Kaylee Norris, and Natasha A. from the great state of Washington. You know, I appreciate y'all every single day. Uh, like I said, go join the Patreon. You can do it for $3 a month to $10 a month. Get you a free mug. Remember, we're not sheepdogs. We are lions around here. So watch your back. Watch your partner's back. And y'all be safe. Until next time. Because I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'm going to do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yo, I got a lot of shit to say, so I'ma do this every day. I'll be writing things until I'm...